Welcome to Falcons Franchise Episode 1. I put so many hints out to what this was going to be on Twitter, and some people got it, because I couldn't have been more obvious with what I was actually going to do. Uh, some people couldn't figure out that their marriage was falling apart if they were handed divorce papers. But I gotta, I gotta relax. I'm alienating my 40-plus divorce audience. and But it's alright, I'm allowed to. As a child of divorce... Well, I'm not going to trauma dump on you guys, but all right. Falcons franchise. Um, it should be a fun one. Obviously, I got to show love to B. John Robinson. Was he a big factor in actually choosing the Falcons? I think it's possible. I just covered up the Texas logo. Don't worry about it. Hook him. B. John is just an incredibly awesome player. I love B. John a lot. And it's, I'm not going to elaborate, but it's unhealthy. I love, <laughs> but Bichon is, he's unbelievable. I think he was right up there for the best player in the entire draft. I get running back value, and maybe you don't love the selection at number eight, but as far as the player and the person you're getting if you're the Atlanta Falcons, you really cannot do a whole lot better than Bijan Robinson, especially for a team that likes to run the damn football. So that's what we're going to be doing with the Falcons in Madden 24. Uh, should be a ton of fun. We'll go ahead and take a look at this team. And it's one of the more interesting franchises I've done because the team is kind of set at the skill positions or at, at some of them, I should say, because you have your running back of the future. You have your receiver of the future in Drake London. You have your tight end of the future in the unicorn, Kyle Pitts, the versatile weapon, obviously, as we call them throughout the entire draft process. But there are quite a few holes on this team. And the big question mark might be surrounding the quarterback, Desmond Ritter. He's only 24 years old, does have star development. But is Desmond Ritter the guy? I'm going to be calling him the Riddler, by the way. I don't know why. It just seems like a fun nickname. And you know what? I've actually got a riddle for you guys. What's white and black and red all over? It's these disgusting Falcons gradient uniforms. Certainly not the newspaper. It's 2023. Nobody's reading that shit. But look how awful these look. <laughs> Maybe some people are going to like them. I, I know people are going to like them. This looks just terrible. Will I wear these in Falcons franchise this year? For sure, but I won't be happy about it. Hit that subscribe button if you're excited to see that atrocity. And we do have a lot of depth at running back. Cordero Patterson, probably not a future answer, but a nice little hybrid receiver. The thing is, though, that Bijan can do that. He's a really, really good receiving back. And what am I going to do with Cordero Patterson long term? Probably not a whole lot. Tyler Algier, short yardage, whatever, that's fine. On the offensive line, Jake Matthews has just been fine for a while. His entire career, really. I feel like he's been right at an 80 overall. Whereas Chris Lindstrom is becoming one of the best guards in the entire NFL. He's so good. I'm, and I'm actually kind of surprised not to see Caleb McGarry rated a bit higher. I'm not saying a 90, but I feel like he was somebody that could have gotten to the 80s pretty easily. He was kind of viewed as a bust, but I feel like he's been pretty good the past year or two. So a little bit surprised to see only a 78, but uh, Andrew Thomas was a 78 last year to start the year. And... Maybe even a 76. He was way, 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 way too low. So these ratings will end up changing over time. And hopefully we can develop them in Falcons franchise. Matthew Bergeron played left tackle at Syracuse. He's going to play left guard for the Falcons in the NFL. And then the defense is just a disaster. Arnold Evacati, I like. Bendy, twitchy, athletic edge rusher uh, from Penn State developing as a complete player, but I think we have a decent pass rush potential with Ebicady. Bud Dupree, I mean, he's just not going to make my team. There's no way. Falcons, like yesterday, cut Michael Walker, which was very surprising to me. And I'm not saying, you know, Michael Walker is an all-pro type player, like hardly, right? But you don't have a lot of depth at linebacker, and the talent is not incredible. Although, you do have a really fun player, Troy Anderson. I talked about him so much during the draft cycle when he was a rookie last year. Uh, and going into that draft, of course, out of Montana State. He was all Big Sky Player of the Year at quarterback. He played quarterback, running back, and then linebacker at Montana State. Kind of insane. And he is a freak athlete. 92 speed, 84 hit power, 94 acceleration. Should make for a very good user linebacker like we like to do in these franchise videos. Jesse Bates was a big free agent signing. And I like Richie Grant, another guy out of the draft that I thought was going to be pretty good. Got star dev, like to see that. And yeah, 
Outside of that, though, there's not a whole lot to be excited about in this top row, it, it really, especially the linebackers. But the secondary continues to get better and better and better. AJ Terrell is a beast. I like taking a chance on Jeff Okuda. We'll have to see what the future holds for him. He has been decent at times for the Lions. And of course, the Falcons traded almost nothing to get him. So why not take the risk? And then I love Clark Phillips. I think he's going to end up being a really nice player for the Falcons and probably our starting slot corner before long. I'm not going to say this season, year one, but I could definitely see year two Clark Phillips starting in the nickel. Maybe Jeff Okuda now. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, Grady Jarrett is a beast, but like 30 years old. And Calais Campbell is in a much worse spot at 37. Still a beast. I mean, he was awesome for the Cardinals, the Jaguars, the Ravens. Everywhere he goes, he, he just seems to be amazing. And we'll see if he can be for us for a year, I guess, in Falcons franchise. And of course, Giants legend Lorenzo Carter. But I'm truly excited to be doing another franchise series. I love doing Giants franchise, but it was so buggy and broken last year and all the glitches and server crashes completely destroyed the experience. Hope none of that happens in Falcons franchise and it should be an awesome year. I know you guys love the franchise series, so I'm super excited to be back and uh, hopefully you guys are as well. So hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. And we're going to open up Falcons franchise doing something that we haven't done since about Madden 08, which is training camp. Play mini games to improve your players before the season and of course we can be rewarded for doing really really well so we want to get some of these boosts and why not start with rushing attack and Bijan robinson the prize crown jewel of the falcons draft class in terms of talent and of course for the best university of all time texas now texas is on the rise man Listen, we'll see what happens. I hype myself up every year, but 2023 is going to be different. All right, 55,000 is the max or the minimum you need to get for gold, and you get skill points for being successful. So I've done some of these in my early access capture period uh, with Madden 24, and I'm going to tell you the strategy is not celebrating during the play, even though it says to do that. It is scoring as quickly as possible, with a juke at the end. That's the strategy. Follow your blocks, and man, Keith Smith is slow. But just get into the end zone. You want to get as many points as possible because that stacks your multiplier in that top right. And the higher your multiplier goes, you know, the more points you're going to get. And we are off to the races already. Just shy of 3,000 points. Now, you want to be able to juke guys out for points. The opportunity just has not really presented itself. And of course, we kind of get caught up there. That's not what you want to have happen, but... You know, Keith Smith is so slow, it's it's tremendously difficult to get past him. He moves at the speed of molasses. Unbelievably slow. And we're probably not going to be able to get gold. It's truly, it's admirable how he can be an NFL player with this level of speed. Get out of the way, Keith. It's a good block, though. And we can set up and juke back the other way. Again... Caden Ellis is too slow. Otherwise, we would have had it easy. Um, but this is... It's not a terrible attempt. It just isn't amazing. I mean, get out of the way! Keith, dude. It's unreal. We might, we might give this another attempt. I think we're only going to get silver. We just got to cut it to the outside. Juke back. Juke back! Double ankle breaker! And then the dive into the end zone I forgot about. But the dive into the end zone is big points, actually. There we go. I don't think we can get this off. I think it's only going to be final one. Yes, yeah, silver. We can give it another shot, though. And I think we're going to. I just got to, like, avoid Keith Smith at all costs. But yeah, those dives into the end zone, you get that celebration dive bonus. That is actually going to end up being big points. So do that as much as you possibly can. Because it really does add up, especially when that multiplier goes higher and higher and higher. And look at Bijan go. This is going to be a nice juke. There we go. Ankle breaker, plus 200, celebration dive bonus. Ready? I just didn't realize how slow some of these guys are going to be. Uh, and it's really actually hurting us more than helping us. We want some of these defenders to be closer. But when we can just outrun them most of the time, it doesn't really even seem to matter. If we can score a touchdown on this play, we got it. Because then I think we're going to have one more attempt following this. 
We just got to get to the end zone quickly enough. All right, we have it. 45-9. A touchdown on this run, I think guarantees gold. And we should have it. Oh my goodness, what a bad angle from Caden Ellis. Dude, I wanted to be able to juke past around him. Doesn't matter. We got the gold with Bijan. I'll tell you, when I was doing the skills trainer from the main menu, everyone was way faster. So it's it's kind of incredible to be able to just be able to run way faster than everybody else. But we'll take the skill point. Okay, pass skeleton outmanned. It seems like the defense has a lot more guys out there than you in this version of pass skeleton. It's because they do. Expect double coverage. We're going out there with Desmond Ritter. And this is probably going to be the big quarterback battle. We got Heineke in the other one. And, uh, oh my goodness. All right. We are definitely outmanned. And hopefully we make the correct decision. You know, reads are not my strong suit. Oh my goodness, what a burst from Matt Collins. All right, we'll take that. And obviously I would assume points for touchdowns. Can we? I don't think we can change routes. I don't love this concept in the end zone. But it gets wide open. Let's go, Miller. Didn't even realize he was on the Falcons, to be honest. It's a decent start. Oh, please don't run into the safety. Drake London, nice catch in traffic. We got to get Kyle Pitts out here. I thought they were going to blitz for a minute. That's going to be open. Yep, just bullet it over the head of the linebackers, and we're going to be in business. This coverage isn't that good. Can we lead that out there? Ooh, screwed up. That's going to be big. Nope. As soon as I speak, I, I get in trouble. <laughs> Ready. We got the multiplier up by completing five consecutive passes, but uh, these guys just dropped the ball. Don't do that, please. And I already know target passing with Taylor Heineke is just not going to go well. As we go <laughs> ahead and just launch it over the target. It's just not going to go well. I'm just not good at this one. Or any of them, really. We're going to try to go deep again. Too late. Oh, nice. <laughs> that was perfect accuracy. Yeah, I can tell. Oh, that's beautiful. We got two. We might go gold with Taylor Heineke. I mean, probably not, but it is possible. Oh, I mean, we're, we're looking good right now. It's ring after ring after ring. Let's get over to the left, get on a line, and then hit this deep ball. Oh, barely got one. I guess we'll take it. Well, that increases the multiplier. We're probably about one good throw away from getting a huge boost. Oh, if that could have hit two, that would have been huge. We got to be big on this last throw. I'll take silver. Silver would be big. That's got to be at least one. No! Let's try to get silver. We were close. Oh, that's how you do it. That's money! The bullseyes are massive. Here's the, here's the play. Run up to the target and just high point it right through. I think we were a little late on that. Oh, that's money. Double doink. What am I, Cody Parkey? All right, this actually could be huge. Let's wait over the middle. And there's one. Oh, we didn't get two? That is an upgrade to silver, though. There's a shot for gold here. Just go up right to the middle. Wait for that post route. We high pointed. That was a mistake. We're at 13-2. We need a completed pass. Oh, I don't like where these rings are. Oh, there's one over here. Let's scramble to this one. And just lob it up. Oh, we got one. Didn't complete the pass, though. We'll take silver. Wide receiver battles up next. Step into the shoes of a receiver. Break your defender's ankles and catch the ball in the hot spots to earn points. So, I... Ooh, we could do Kyle Pitts, actually. He might be better for red zone attack. Who do we really need to upgrade? Frank Darby's in here. Kind of forgot about him. Arizona State, deep threat. Blocking tight end from Georgia and John Fitzpatrick. Here's what I'm going to say. Everyone down of... I mean, I know Mac Holland's looking yoked in camp. He's 29. Everyone south of Drake London... I don't really care. I, I'm sorry, dude. We're going to do Drake London. Receiver battle. And hopefully dominate. Get open, call for the ball with A. Catching the ball within the hot spots. And with more time remaining, we'll earn you bonus points. Successful catches will increase your score multiplier. And incomplete passes will reset it. So, 
I mean, out routes could be big. I think 400 is going to be the most attainable in the quickest amount of time. So let's go for it. That's, I think that's pretty good. Called for it too late. Okay, now we know. Now we know. I'll tell you, I'd love to go up against anybody not named AJ Terrell. His coverage is too good. Stop. <laughs> Let me live, dude. Oh, this is so tough. Throw the ball. I'm spamming A. Dude, get AJ Terrell out of here. Let me go up against, I don't know, Clark Phillips. That's a better matchup right now. Oh, he's killing me. Go up and make a play, Drake. Oh, he did. We get hotspot bonus for that? I feel like we should. Get, get off me. Oh my God, you little loser, AJ. Oh, we lost him. We lost him. Okay, not a great score. <laughs> AJ Terrell is like, it's like super glue, dude. I cannot get away. We just get a good pass here, maybe? Nope. I, I, dude, he's, his recovery speed is unbelievable. Even when we get open a little bit, he's just right there. Oh, dive and grab, though? And it doesn't count. Okay, we're doing something now. It's not left trigger and right trigger. It's just one. It's just one. Okay, that's way better. Just hold right trigger, right? That's what I'm doing. Get leverage and then break off. Oh, that's money. That's money. Now we got it. This is guaranteed gold. It's saying like hold left trigger and right trigger. Don't do that. Go in, right trigger away, lose them 400. That's the way to do it. This is easy gold now. Went off the line, right trigger away, bang, call for the ball, easy 200. Oh, this was money. We figured out the glitch. That's all it was. That's all we needed. Caught every ball. I mean, that's 18,000 points. Drake London, big skill point, big upgrade. And now red zone attack, that could be a lot tougher. We're going Kyle Pitts. I know he doesn't need the help as much, but if you guys watch Giants franchise, we had Nick Duvall, best tight end in NFL history. Don't look it up. He's a fake player, doesn't exist, but existed in Giants franchise. He was real to me, damn it. It was unbelievable. And uh, Kyle Pitts has got a lot to live up to. But uh, having a, a sick tight end is a game changer. And we're just going back of the end zone and just go up and get it. We're going to say Kyle Pitts bigger, stronger, in some cases faster. And that's all it takes. Uh, it's going to be the same method. Same method that worked with Drake London. We're not even going to run just typical fade routes. We're going to fake leverage, get position, and catch the ball. That didn't count? Wow. Lean him in. Boom. Get away. See, that's so easy. We know the glitch now. Here we go. Ready? It's win leverage, cut away with just right trigger, call for the ball as you do it, easy points. Okay. Right. I don't know if we can get gold on this rep, but we, uh, we'll we definitely get it on the next one. Yeah, call for it as you get away, or maybe just slightly after. Inside lean, lose him, pass right where it needs to be. Okay, we can get gold. This rep might determine it. We got him, we got him, we got him. Get the ball in a good spot. Big catch. I accidentally hit continue way too quick. I think we only got silver. No. No. Why does it pop up so quickly? We got a skill point, though. I'll take it. And, uh... Are we, we only would have got uh, 500 more XP and 150 more rookie snaps, which doesn't even apply to Kyle Pitt. So, that actually doesn't even matter. Trench Battle, the long haul. This version of Trench Battle sure has a lot of blockers between you and the QB. Don't let that stop you, though. Don't let anything stop you. So we actually need to develop defensive linemen and edge rushers. I'm probably going to stay away from Grady Jarrett, Calais Campbell. We want guys that are actually going to play and make a big impact. I'm going to go, well, Cook him horn, Saquon Graham. I'm going to go Arnold Evocati. He's got star dev, but getting him a skill point could be big. Getting him XP is going to be big. Here's what we need to do. Get to the QB as quickly as possible and force fumbles. That's what we need to do. Okay. So it's going to be using the right stick, I assume. Yep. And also, we might be able to weave a little bit. Yeah, just completely ignore some of these guys. All right, we got to the good zone. Boom! Force the fumble. Oh, he's still up? How is he? Dude, how did he break those hit sticks? Maybe hit stick is not the way. 
Yeah, don't go out of bounds. We could get these these plus one bonuses. Oh no, we're, we're caught, we're caught, we're caught. But going through the blockers actually gets you more points. And then I think RB maybe force the fumble. Okay, RB is my, that might be what we want. We'll do better on the next attempt. I think that swim move is going to be money to get these plus ones. Oh, those are multiplier bonuses. So you, you have to engage. That's what you want to do. You, you have to engage with these guys and get those plus ones. The multipliers are going to be the difference maker. Is Desmond Ritter the best break sack quarterback of all time? What am I seeing here? Every time I get in position, Desmond Ritter just breaks the sack. Get around the barrier, Arnold. Come on. We need these multipliers for points. The old disengage and then re-engage. This is moving too quickly. Arnold, please. We have no chance. There's eight blockers. I'm just going to make a mad dash for Ritter. I, what would bring him down? I hit A to conservative tackle. I don't even know if that exists anymore. Dude, Desmond Ritter refuses to be tackled. Where was this effort in the quarterback drill? Unreal. I mean, simply unbelievable. How do you wrap him up? Dive? Yeah, just dive after him. That's the way to do it. Okay. Now we know for the next one. And again, remember to get those plus ones. The multiplier is going to be huge for your success in this drill overall. And then dive after Ritter. Where are you going, Arnold? He just flew out of bounds. Okay, come on. The biggest issue right now I cannot sack Desmond Ritter. He just shakes off every Arnold Ebicady advance, dude. It doesn't matter. He just will not get sacked by Arnold Ebicady. It's tremendous uh, perseverance, honestly. And, and it's making me reconsider him long-term as our quarterback. But goodness, dude, I want gold so badly. And he just doesn't get tackled. Is it because I'm hitting right trigger? That surely is not it. He just shakes you off. Stop. Okay, come on, Arnold. You are frustrating me a ton. Your inability to bring down Desmond Ritter is incredible. It's, I mean, it truly is something. And he's stuck on these things. Not even getting the multiplier. You got to get the multiplier. Dive right into him. Are we not taking a good enough angle? Are we going to get a sack this year on a quarterback? I'm not sure it's going to be possible after seeing this. This is just, it's incredibly bad, is what we're looking at right now from, from Arnold. And, oh my goodness. It's like watching a, a baby giraffe. Get off the block. Dive at him. Okay. That sometimes works. Not always. I don't, I, I, it's not reliable at all, but it's more reliable than just trying to tackle him. Somehow. Don't really understand that, but it seems to be. That multiplier's going high. All right, we got all of them. We need to wrap them up. There you go. 232 points away. They're squeezing me for every last point. Okay, this is the one. Okay, we got every multiplier. Get around them. We just whiffed. Completely whiffed. Go back for the football. Nope. Dive at them. Nope. Force them out. I will take it, I guess. It's not pretty, but you know what? None of them have been. Another multiplier. I want one more. There we go. Get after Ritter. There it is. That's silver. Okay. All we need is a good attempt here. That's a quick multiplier. A little double swim move looking like Michael Phelps. Missed that multiplier. That could loom large. I'm a little bit afraid about that. We're building up time, though. We're going to come back for this one. Multiplier and Priest. Or those, I'm not saying words right now. Come on. Arnold, get after him. Dive! Got him! Gold! Let's go! Chase and tackle could be easier. I used to love doing this one in Madden 08. We're going with Troy Anderson. In my opinion, or my expectation, is that Troy Anderson's going to end up being our starting Mike linebacker. He's got the speed. He's got the athleticism. We just got to hit the hole, make tackles, wrap up. Hit sticks would be good. That used to be my method of tackling back in the day. 
But I'll do that on, on occasion in these new Maddens. And uh, th that's really bad for points. You do get a really nice hit stick bonus, though. Oh, he see, he got caught up on the blocker, so the timing was completely changed. I used to love the pitches in Madden 08, because they were so easy to read. And I think we will end up forcing a few fumbles this way. Okay, that counts. He just hit stick the, the uh, tackling dummy, or the, the blocking dummy. Okay, that change of direction is insanely bad. And he just, okay. All right, we're restarting. How do we whiff on that? And he just missed the tackle. Oh, the hit stick, please. He's just gonna shake off every one of these hit sticks. All right. Okay. I think the move is just wrapping up and spamming the hell out of A. That's the move. Bring him down and our points are getting, you know, it's way more consistent at least. I don't know that the hit sticking is worth it. Just shoot these gaps as quickly as possible and spam A to bring him down. He can't spin you out when you're wrapping up. So that's what I would say is the move. Uh, we play that one pretty well. Multiplier is eliminated because we didn't get the TFL, but we didn't allow a touchdown either. He keeps doing these weird little, like, stops behind these blockers. And I, we're not going to be fooled by it. I think we can still get 30k here. We have 30 seconds to get 10,000 points, essentially. Oh, it's doable. Times four multiplier. A TFL here would be huge, and we're going to allow a touchdown. Save it, Troy! Now it's going to be tight. Got to build that multiplier back up. I'm going to go for a hit stick then. He just shook it off. That, it might be dead. It might be dead. Should have just wrapped up. Should have wrapped. Now we have to go for hit sticks. We need like a fumble or something. It might be too little too late. He just shook it off. Ah, oh, tr Troy! And I spammed that hit continue. All right. I think on some of these though, silver is not much worse than gold. Again, we would have had 500 more XP and that's all. So that's actually okay. DB battle. This one could be big. Silver is okay here. It's only 500 XP. We, we know about Jesse Bates and AJ Terrell. I don't really think we need to do it with those guys. I think it's going to be Richie Grant and Clark Phillips. Clark Phillips is going to be DB battle here. The one downside to him in this ability or in this drill is he's short. That's just it. He is a little shorty pants here. And it could be, it could be tough. Also, we can see the route. Is that, oh my goodness. If we can see the route just by hitting left trigger. Oh my goodness, this is way too easy. Uh, this is definitely not supposed to be in the game. Let's go. And we still get beat. All right, final rep. Is this a go route? It's a corner. I was run so odd. I, I don't know how we can't even stop it when we know what's coming. It's Scotty Miller, dude. Come on. He might complete this. He just doesn't go for it. Oh, you're kidding me. We really just have to make one more play with this multiplier. We're staying in phase. We're shielding. We lost it. It's a touchdown. How? I am sprinting the whole way. Please throw a pick. All right, we, we might be back in it here. Come on, Clark. You've been super disappointing. That could be gold. One more here. One more. Interception seals it. There it is. Gold. Let's go. That was way too easy. Of course, a skill point. Love that. All right, what do we have left? So DB battle red zone defense. And then a little bit of kicking action. So who do we want for this? I mean, we might try and develop Jeff Okuda. I did say Richie Grant earlier. Okuda, I have more questions about. I do want to develop Richie Grant to be a starter, a starting strong safety. So we're going to do Richie Grant here. And we don't know the routes on this. It's going to be tougher. Why is it Scotty Miller? He's destroying my life. I mean, this is a touchdown. I mean, surely. Richie Grant just can't like, keep up. Scotty Miller's way too quick. Like, we're right there, but uh, it's tough. The trick to this drill, though... You want to hold LB in coverage, and you can just kind of stick to the receiver a little bit, and that's going to be how you prevent these big plays. Hold LB, 
and you're gonna have a lot more success. Although not always, because Scotty Miller is just too, too good, dude. Uh, it's unreal. It's unreal. But getting these incomplete passes is gonna be big too. But I mean, no one is any match for Scotty Miller. These routes are too crisp, and he runs away from coverage every time. And Desmond Ritter is not going to throw an inaccurate pass. That's only when I'm the quarterback. Not coverable. Cannot cover that. Okay, right now I'm playing a little bit of Richie Grant gets torched simulator. It's not going well. All right. Decent enough of a rep. You really want to get your hands on the ball, though, is where the points are made. And you got to predict a little bit, so that's big. We need 8,000 points for gold. And that's going to be a touchdown. Oh, we dropped it. Okay. Come on, set. Automatic silver. I don't really think we can do worse than that. We'd have to, have to allow a touchdown like every play. And that's that's one. That's two. <laughs> oh, no. No, please. Please. All right, we'll take that. If we get a pick here, I think it would put us in really, really good position to get gold. Nope. Oh, jeez. We're all over it. It's going to be a touchdown somehow. Okay, okay. No, we're good. With the times four multiplier, we need to make a play. We read it. Oh, my God. Come on, dude. Oh, back-to-back -back picks is an excellent start. If we can get three in a row, I would say... Gold is all but guaranteed. But Scotty Miller just outruns us to the back corner of the end zone every time. Every time they're on the left side of the field, it's a short route. We know that. So we'll take the coverage sack. It's not the best result. You kind of want to bait the throw a little bit more. But it might not end up mattering. All we need is one play. It's no touchdown. Multiplier increase, one play. Make one play on the ball and it's gold. I'm worried about him. Get up there! That's it. That's guaranteed. 11K. Scotty Miller is no chance. We can even allow a touchdown. Doesn't matter. But we won't. Richie Grant gets gold. We'll take that skill point. Made it look easy. Thank you. Field goal accuracy is up next. And then, listen. I say every year, I can't play offense, I can't play defense, I suck at Madden, but damn if I can't punt. Best punter on YouTube, Coffin Corner, guaranteed gold. So 8,000 points for field goal accuracy. We got the GOAT, Young Way Koo. See what he can do. We'll see what he can Young Way do. Justin Tucker took him. That, that's the real greatest of all time. Uh, wind is 12 miles per hour. The timer's already started. We got to start getting these kicks off. I might have just screwed myself because these these uh, times didn't realize the timer was starting. Also, didn't mean to even kick it. This is such a shank. Okay. Rough start, which means we just restart, and that's easy. We're going to nail it. We're going to keep going. I don't know how much, like, actually hitting the target is going to matter. I feel like that's going to be pretty difficult. I'm just going to aim down the middle because if we go right down the middle, we get the most points. Yeah, plus 800 for amazing accuracy. We got to be aware of the wind. But the meter... Oh, also crushed. The meter um, tells us what the wind is going to do to the kick. So I don't actually think we need to worry about it all that much. Just follow the arc, and I think we're crushing it. We're already to 2750. And I don't know if we're going to miss a kick for the rest of this whole thing. Oh, we nearly just hit the target. Silver already... 16 miles per hour. We're not going to wait to see if we can maybe hit the target, you know? We're just going to fire them out and hope that we can do it. And we actually might hit the bullseye on that one. 40 seconds. Already at 48.50. That might smash. And it does. 66.50. Right down the middle. We're probably going to miss on this one. Okay, that was not amazing accuracy. 30 seconds to go. We're a little bit off, so we'll just do a little bit to the left there. Yeah, that did not do what I wanted it to do. 69.50. That should be about right down the middle. It's going to be close. Give me the smash. Oh, right down the middle. That's gold, and we can just do whatever we want for the final 15 seconds. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Might hit it again just for chits and giggles. Why not? But 
Uh, we got probably two attempts left. Maybe we can get 10,000. Doesn't really matter one way or the other, but here we go. Final kick. And that is 9,500. Easy gold. And uh, yeah, we'll go to the punting. So this is one where we can actually get silver. It's only plus 500. We got Bradley Pinion. Okay, 10,000 points here with Bradley Pinion. We have eight attempts. So it's going to be just all about, I would say, timing it up perfectly and playing it a little bit safe. It's not about speed here. It's just about precision and hopefully getting some good bounces. And that's not a bad start. We get the second ring on that. And I think you do want to go with the wind, you know? When we have 15 miles per hour of wind going to the right, you don't really want to kick it towards the left spot. And that should be a decent punt as well. We just want to avoid the end zone. The touchback, okay. All right, there we go. Coffin corner. Here's the thing. It's already, like, you can see if you go up or down, it just goes down. It's already pre-slotted in for max distance. So all you have to do is aim it. And max power, I mean, it's pretty much always going to be short of that ring. So you can't just aim it towards the actual corner. You just have to hope you get a decent bounce. And this actually should be really good. There is a lot of wind fighting us. We just need a good bounce here. And that'll do it. Plus a thousand. I don't know if we're going to get gold on this first attempt here. It took us a second to really dial in. But, you know, now that we found our rhythm, we're obviously cruising. But, uh, yeah, it was too little too late. We're going to get gold on this next one, though. Oh, that's a great bounce. Excellent start. Just got to keep it up. That should be pretty good, too, actually. Need a good bounce. And that is back-to-back -back coffin corners. Playing it a little bit conservatively, but it's working out. I'd, I'd rather miss, you know, a foot wide and have it land out of bounds rather than a foot long and go into the end zone. It's another coffin corner. And that's three in a row. Uh, three in a row. I mean, this is surely going to be gold. Unless this takes a terrible bounce. But I think that's going to be money. It's low enough. And, uh... We'll take the inner ring. That's not too bad. Coffin corner again. That's silver. And this should be gold. Yeah, I feel good about it. Oh, don't go in the end zone, please. It looks good. That's a great bounce. That's a coffin corner. We're just shy of gold, though. Our multiplier on this is times six. Played this one really conservatively. We might get that inner ring, though. We'll take that. That's the guaranteed gold. And as long as we don't get uh, minus points here, we're going to be good. So we're going to play it conservatively. We're going to aim like right there. And we still could go coffin corner on this, but guaranteed pretty much not to go into the end zone. Famous last words? No. Yeah, we'll, we'll take that. 12-3. Easy gold medal. Bradley Pinion might put up an unbelievable punting season this year. I can tell. I'm not going to be scoring points on offense. It's just not how these series go. So training camp is complete. We can now upgrade some of these players and get them, I mean, slight boosts. Don't get me wrong, they're slight, but that's what training camp can be. It's a little bit of a minor tweak heading into the season that can, you know, help you out long term. For Drake London, we got to worry about him as a separator. His speed is not exceptional. I don't really know if I want to develop deep route running. But that spectacular catch has to go up if we're just going to be able to throw him the ball. Just throw it up and hope he comes down with it. So for Drake London, we might just do deep threat anyway. Now, physical would increase that, but I, I want route running to go up a bit. Playmaker just isn't going to be the one for me. I'm going to do deep threat. He's actually pretty close to another upgrade as well. Just uh, about 40, 30 XP away. And uh, we'll take this upgrade. Plus two deep route running, plus two catch and traffic. I wanted spectacular catch, but I'll take catch and traffic going up. I wanted medium route running too, but did not get it. And then for Bijan, I mean, we can go any which way. I'd like spin move to be 80 plus. I'd like agility to be 90 plus. 
Trucking's in a good spot, stiff arm too. I think his, his catching is low. I really do think his catching is low. But um, I don't know that I want to do receiving back. I think he's going to be good enough in that regard already. I'm going to do elusive back. Try to get agility 90 plus. We'll see what gets boosted here. Agility 90 plus. Awareness plus one. Ball carrier vision and change of direction even. So agility is now at a 90. Change of direction at a 92. I mean, I'm going to tell you right now. Cordero Patterson is not RB1. Kyle Pitts is already just an insane receiver. But if we want to run the damn ball... 57 run block is not going to cut it for me. We're going to upgrade blocking for Kyle Pitts, develop that aspect of his game. And his XP actually says that he should be do another skill point upgrade as well. Don't know when we're going to get that, but he's up to 60 run block. Plus three is a massive boost. Troy Anderson's upgrade, I'm probably going to be usering him a lot, but there also is a chance I don't. So getting his coverage in a good position could also be... Uh, super beneficial we're gonna do that we probably end up getting tackle as an upgrade as well at some point so we'll just we'll take the easy no-brainer upgrade 57 zone coverage is still just awful man coverage is also terrible we'll see what troy anderson looks like man but our linebackers it's not looking great caden ellis is our highest rated inside linebacker and then for epicady what is his block at 71 that's actually not nearly as bad as i would have expected it's not like amazing it's not terrible though i am gonna do run stopper and we will worry about finesse moves with his next upgrade plus three block shedding plus three tackles a really nice boost and then finesse moves is definitely next up on the list and then richie grant i think he's kind of slow 87 speed Ugh. tackling could be 70 plus block shedding could go up Zone coverage is not in the worst spot. He's also about to get another upgrade. Hybrid would get his man coverage up slightly, which is only in the 60s. Okay, we're going to do hybrid for Richie Grant. Just make him a little bit more well-rounded. And we get plus three man coverage, plus one awareness, which, all right, sure. Now, Pinion does have 93 kick power. I don't think accuracy is going to matter too much in Madden for a punter. We're going to upgrade his power. And we do get kick accuracy anyway, but plus two kick power, I feel like is huge. 95 kick power on Bradley Pinion. He's going to have just a cannon for a leg. And we'll upgrade Young Wei. And we will I will probably go power. I think awareness, or and obviously awareness is not going to matter too much. But I don't think accuracy is going to matter that much either. Because all we have to do on my end is is nail the kick so power is going to be paramount we get kick accuracy anyway same upgrades as bradley pinion and 94 kick power is going to be a game changer that plus two is going to extend our distance that we can make by like what three four five yards maybe i think that's big weekly strategy is not going to matter too much in preseason but what will matter is the players that we have for upgrades on the season for for training xp so we could actually do these drills and lock in um, lock in some upgrade points for them. Bergeron's going to have star dev. Clark Phillips is at normal. Do I use Bijan in here? Who would we switch him out for? Like Ebicady or probably not a rookie, to be honest. Maybe get Troy Anderson in there. If he's going to be a starter, and I think all these guys will at some point. Clark Phillips not right now. We definitely want to end up, like, developing him a lot. Bijan really got a back strain in practice? Are you kidding me, dude? Okay. No Bijan for preseason week one. I guess we'll deal with that. We do have an upgrade for Kyle Pitts. I'm going to go blocking again. Just want him to be a little bit more well-rounded. And when you upgrade tight end, it upgrades other things anyway. Like, medium route running goes up. So, you don't really just have to worry about... Oh man, if I do run blocking, it's not going to upgrade him as a receiver. It kind of does everything. I just wanted to make it more blocking focused rather than upgrade, you know, his deep route running ability, which is already pretty good. And he's not going to be doing that a whole lot anyway. It's going to be a lot of medium route running or tight ends. And then for Drake London, do I go deep threat again? I want medium route running. and I feel like deep threat gives us the best chance to do that. 
So I'm going to go deep threat. And we get plus two deep route running, plus one catching, and plus two to release. He's becoming more well-rounded. Change of directions in 88. That's actually really, really good for a receiver that's six foot four. And uh, I don't know. We'll kind of see what happens with him. Clark Phillips. Just got to make him more well-rounded. I envision him as our slot corner. So man coverage is going to be big, but... We also are going to run zone. I'm going to upgrade slot. Man coverage is probably going to be the big one that gets upgraded here. We should get plus two press. Plus two play rec, plus one man, and acceleration. Acceleration, I don't mind. Goes up to a 95. I'd love for speed to be 90 plus, but that's going to be tough. Matt Hennessy is a really good backup to have. We'll do pass protector for him. It's clearly the weakness right now. What about Desmond Ritter? The arm's pretty good. Accuracy could be better. 88 speed, 91 acceleration is in a really, really good spot already. I'm going to do field general. Just upgrade the accuracy across the board. I think that's the biggest thing for him right now. Plus one to all of the accuracies. Um, I'm not complaining. I'll take that. And then the last upgrade right now is Troy Anderson. Talked about him earlier. He was due for an upgrade. Block shedding is really bad. Tackling needs to be higher. So run stopper it is. And especially if we do end up using him, the coverage is not going to matter as much. But again, I want to kind of just upgrade him in his entirety and not focus on, oh, well, I'm going to use him every play because I might not. I might not. Block shedding, zone coverage, and play rec goes up. Tackling and block shedding are the two biggest things for me right now after we got that plus three to uh, zone coverage earlier. Tackling and block shedding are just way too low. I'm also going to mess with the progression sliders. Running back, I'm going to turn up a little bit, probably to 150. I do want running backs to kind of be more of what they are in the NFL, which is be better right away and then regress way, way, way quicker. So we're also going to speed up regression to about 150. Maybe, oh man, it's out of 200 though. We'll do, we'll do 130 at least or 140. It, regression hits big for those running backs. I could even do 150. We're going to do 140 for now. I'm going to turn it up a bit on the skill positions, except for quarterback. I'm going to turn it down for QBs. You know, a lot of these quarterbacks don't really reach their full potential until their 30s, and that just won't happen in Madden. So for quarterbacks, I'm going to turn it down to probably about 70 for right now. And then same deal for the offensive line, and then turn it up for corners and maybe slightly for safeties. But corners for sure. And then to end this episode, we'll jump in to play the moments here in Franchise. It's going to be all Madden difficulty for right now and probably the entirety. I don't really plan on messing with the sliders for right now. We're going to get a healthy chunk of football in front of us before we do anything like that. And uh, we'll see how it plays. And you guys know, oftentimes it's a struggle at the start. And uh, it definitely pays off in the end. So third down alert. We're going to take over. Starters should be on the field with the exception of Bijan Robinson. Remember, he was injured in practice. But this is what we're looking at. Matt Collins, Scotty Miller, Drake London, Kyle Pitts off to the right. It is third down and eight. We're going to throw that ball quickly up the seam, finding Scotty Miller for the touchdown. Man, we really wasted no time. You know, that might be the first time in a franchise for me, don't know for a fact, that the first play was a touchdown. It probably is the first time because I don't really know if I've ever started with play the moments, but it's preseason week one and we already have done quite a bit of gameplay in this episode with the mini camp. That's got to be the first time that's ever happened. And here we are on defense. And this is one of those scenarios where, you know, we are not going to be using Troy Anderson. We have Jalen Hawkins or Hawkins in the box. Jeff Okuda making the tackle on Raheem Mostert and Troy Anderson was blitzing. So obviously not going to have control of him in that type of a situation. Third and seven now. I'm not sure Jalen Hawkins is going to be in the box every play. He's kind of in a money backer role for us right now. And I'm not sure I want to keep that. As Tua has all day to throw. Our pass rush is not getting there. Eventually Tyree Kill gets opened. Jesse Bates couldn't quite wrap up. But there was another Falcon in there to make the play. First and goal now for the Dolphins. We're trying to keep them out of the end zone. And it's quite clear... That pass rush is going to be a problem for us this year. It, it, it's never been more obvious. And coverage could be as well. Touchdown, Jalen Waddle. Is he going to do the Waddle? Nope, he's doing whatever that is. Why are so many people doing that celebration? 
DeAndre Hopkins was doing it in in the superstar mode with Adam Daniel. If you haven't checked that out, you might enjoy it, so check that out on the channel. And I don't I've never seen it before. I don't really know what's happening with it. But I'll tell you this, I don't like it. Jesse Bates in at linebacker. It always gets kind of screwed up in preseason. Because no one knows what to do. We don't have the depth at certain positions and they just put safeties in at linebacker trying to get backups in. That was a huge play. And this is Mike White. Jets and I believe Western Kentucky legend. And that's going to be a diving... No, out of the end zone. No touchdown. It's always interesting getting used to Madden controls again. Especially when, uh, you know, players feel slow in the past couple of Maddens and they don't really react very quickly. It doesn't feel, you know, quite so fluid. So there is going to be a bit of a curve here. Let's see if we can make a play. Ooh, I mean, we got in there, didn't end up making the play, but hit that gap pretty quickly. What is that celebration? I'm going to be seeing that in my nightmares tonight. Heineke in the game, potentially fighting to be the starting quarterback. And that's a good way of getting the football out quickly. Four for four for 112 yards and a touchdown is Taylor Heineke. Fourth and seven, it's preseason. We're going to throw the football. We're going to go for it. We can see the kicker. We already know Young Way Koo can hit kicks. We don't know if Heineke can be the starting quarterback. And that was a good throw. But it was dropped. And guess what? You just got cut. You're not making the team. And I will say, one of the biggest things with the Falcons drafting Bijan Robinson, what well, really eats into a good rookie. Tyler Algier was really solid as a rookie, right? And then, guess what? Playing time cut in half, maybe even more, because Bijan Robinson's going to be getting a healthy chunk of the uh, carries you'd have to expect. We're going to roll out with Heineke. Looking to make a play. Speed just not quite good enough. Frank Darby is somebody who I think could make an impact at the bottom of this roster. As Heineke overthrows Jonu Smith. I mean, that would have been a, a really nice conversion there. That, of course, that doesn't end up happening. Bad throw, I think, more than a drop on Jonu Smith. Like, yeah, it hit his hands. You should catch it. But he took a big hit, and he was open for a little bit. And the pass just sailed on a Heineke there. A special teams tackle by Armstrong. Might take a shot off play action here. I think we have it. Heineke missed him. Inaccurate. Just because he's bad. Not really even a reason for it. It's just because it is Taylor Heineke. We will go for it down six here in the third quarter of preseason football action. I'd like to get Kaderil Hodge on a slant if possible. And I don't know... We just had a, a receiver sprint back towards the line of scrimmage. Not great. Emmanuel Agba's playing in the third quarter. Why? Okay. Third and seven. Still in a very winnable game. Let's keep in Algier to block. Let's see if we can't find a receiver. Yep. That happened. Now, somehow we scored, by the way. It's 21-20. Just over four minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Mike White trying to lead the comeback. Troy Anderson is in, by the way. And that is wide open. Did we get lost? Somebody had to carry that route. I hope it wasn't me. Oh, no. That's a huge gain. Braxton Berrios. Inside the 10 for the Dolphins. Mike McDaniel calling a great game here. Only scoring 20 on the Falcons' defense. I mean, the starters are not great. You can only imagine the backups. And that is a pretty good coverage, actually. Clark Phillips. All right. Hey, he's got the seatbelt on. I like that. Clark Phillips again. I'm telling you, Clark Phillips is going to be a, a playmaker. He's a little tiny. I get it. But the ability is there. He's just going to be one of those guys that makes plays regardless of his potential physical limitations. Touchdown right in front of him. Never mind. Get him off the team. It's, it's chosen. It's Robbie Anderson, dude. Okay. Rain coming down here in Miami. And we're looking to mount the comeback. It's Frank Darby. He's got decent speed. They want us to throw the ball, but guess what? It's a touchdown game. We don't necessarily have to. We have time. Look at Algier. Tyler Algier to the next level. 
18 carries for 91 yards. He thinks this is the regular season. He's getting plenty of touches. That's a two-minute warning. We're going for two, by the way, if we score. It's the preseason. Wide open over the middle. Please catch it. Thank you, Hart. Okay, maybe you're not cut. We're stepping up. Man, Heineke, he doesn't have a ton of speed, huh? That works in superstar mode with Adam Daniel. Uh, did not work here. Just over a minute to play. We tried this a little bit earlier, and Frank Darby dropped the ball. And we hit Algier. We found it too late. Nearly intercepted. Found it way too late. Wasn't really watching the wheel out of the backfield. I don't know if that was quite a wheel. But wasn't really watching it. Hurt us there a bit. Third and eight. Over the middle. Frank Darby, nice catch first down. Godwin Igwe Buike checks into the game. He might be the guy here. No, it was read option. Frank Darby's injured. We lose a timeout. We lose a weapon in the red zone. We need to find God. Where's Godwin Igwe Buike? He's gone. Somebody's got to locate him. All right, second and goal here from the 31. That's wide open. Janu Smith, touchdown! And we're not tying it up. We're going for two. Janu Smith finds the end zone, works open underneath. And of course, as I mentioned, we're going for it. Get Frank Darby back on the field. You're fighting to make the team. We're going to run the, the damn ball. I talked about it earlier. That's what we're doing, running the ball. Behind our left side of the line. Up the middle. Algier fights in. Two-point conversion is successful. We take the lead 29-28. And we'll see if our defense can win the game. Second and 18. After, I guess, a nice play was made. Okay, this is the final play of the game. Fourth and 12. Just stay back. Don't let him beat you. Where are you going, Clark? We'll take the knockdown. Game over. Preseason week one win. We're going undefeated. But that will do it for episode one. I feel like a little bit more chaotic than typical episodes are or will be. But it was a fun one. Bringing back training camp, I, I've been asking for that for a while. Finally, it happened. Getting these skill point upgrades is cool. And hopefully, it will end up resulting in a really, really good Atlanta Falcons team. This is just the starting point. You know, we're going to have some really tough decisions on the defensive line in particular. Jesse Bates is getting paid a ton. But when you look at it, we might end up changing to a different defense. But who is an actual guaranteed long-term starter for this team it's hard to find them like i don't know that you can say for sure epic Katie or carter right or even richie grant it's jesse bates it's aj terrell i think those are really the two on defense campbell's too old grady jarrett's contract i think is going to be expiring somewhat soon and he's 30 so Three years, 20 mil each year. But three years, would you say that's a long-term starter? I guess you could. I guess you could. I was kind of thinking like three to five. So I'll, we'll, we'll say Grady Jarrett's in that as well. But um, not a whole lot on defense. And then offensively, Pitt, London, Bijan, Lindstrom, and, you know, maybe Jake Matthews. He's 30 plus and uh, has never really developed all that much, you know? Four years left, getting paid a ton. Might end up being a tough decision with him, but we'll see. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.